Hello Abbey Woodworkers, Mayanna here with Heartwood Art. Today I want to talk about the legs that I'm building for my miter saw station. So let's dive in. Hey, if this is your first time here, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Come on over to Heartwood Art and get all the specs on these legs and the miter saw station. Okay, I want to tell you why I built the legs that I did, because there's all kinds of ways to build legs for workbenches. One of the most popular that I see is putting the boards at a right angle using pocket holes in them. That's an okay way to do it. Another popular way I see is using a whole 4x4 four four and putting the frame around the whole outside of that. That's an okay way to do it too. And then some folks I see take a 4x4 four four and cut a notch in it for a spanner board to slip into it and go across for the frame. They usually put lag bolts in that too. That's one of the sturdiest ways that you can build legs for a workbench. But hey, I'm not setting a car on it. <laughs> I just got this and the shelf that's going to hold the boards that I'm cutting. So it's not quite that much weight, but I don't think a single 2x4 is quite hefty enough either. So that's why I built mine like this. I sistered up a couple of 2x4s with wood glue and I'll be putting two and a half inch wood screws in them too, but the wood glue is going to hold it tight. It's not going anywhere. And you can see that I have two different boards. This is where my spanner board will go to go across the long length because this thing is going to be about six feet long, right? And then for the shorter front to back ones, then I'm going to put them in the edge going across here, which is fine too. Now, one of the reasons I did it this way is because if you just screw boards to a 2x4, all of the shear force and the weight is going on those screws that are in there, you know? And this way, that spanner board has some wood to sit on. And same thing with the top. It has wood to sit on, so all the pressure is going straight down to the floor. The other reason I built them this way is because I plan to put casters on this thing to make it mobile, right? And my understanding is it's a really bad idea to do, drill straight up into the end grain of the wood to put casters in it. And, you know, with uh, those right angle ones, that's kind of the only choice you've got. Sometimes with 4x4s, four that may be the only choice. But I got a little trick that I'm going to show you. So the reason that it's, uh, it's a bad idea, the grain is going straight up and down too, and that screw is going with the grain. If that caster hits a bump, it's going to jerk, and it's going to try to pull out at an angle. It's not going to have much trouble because it's going straight up and down with the grain. So here's what I plan to do with mine. Because this caster, you see it has two dimensions, and one of them, being long ways, is about almost exactly the same as that board. And so it's going to fit fine there. And I'm going to take a piece of three-quarter inch plywood and cut it to the dimension of that. And I'm going to mount the caster to it. And it's like, well then, okay, man, how are you going to get this mounted to the leg? I'll show you. This is a fantastic use of pocket holes, right? So I can drill straight down into the wood this way. And then on the back side of that second 2x4, those screws are going to come in at an angle. They're going to cut across the grain. That caster hits a bump. It's not going to jerk out in any kind of way. And this is very, very secure. Here's the actual build on the legs. The tall solid leg is 31 inches. The long mid leg on the front is 24 inches. The gap above and below the mid leg is 1.5 inches, as that's the width of a 2x4. The short leg on the bottom is 4 inches. And you can see the link above or below this video for how working with the temporary miter saw station helped me determine these links. Now I cut all of the 31 inch and 24 inch boards, but because I didn't have a stop block on my temporary miter saw stand, I hand measured each of those cuts and some were up to 1 16th of an inch off. So I measured the length for the little bottom board for each leg separately to ensure it made up the difference and my legs would be square at the bottom for sitting on the floor. Next, I laid the 31 inch bottom boards out side by side. Then I placed the small 4 inch boards on top, ensuring that the bottoms were dead even. Then I clamped the 4 inch blocks down on two outside blocks. That helped ensure the whole row stayed in place. Next, I laid a 2x4 across the lower section. And then I laid the 24 inch boards above that. Then I placed a 2x4 across the top. Now, after checking that everything was square, I was ready to glue up the pieces. 
I moved the clamps to the 2x4 cross pieces and began removing each 4 inch and 24 inch board one at a time, applying glue and then replacing. Next, I placed another set of 2x4s over the 4 inch and 2x4 pieces and moved my clamps to those as a way to apply even pressure across all of them until the glue dried. Now this method worked okay, but two of the legs came out uneven at either the top or the bottom. If I build legs like this again, I'll have at least four more clamps to hold everything in place, like leaving them on the first 2x4s I laid across the legs. I'll also put a piece of plywood vertically across the top and bottom edges and bar clamp them top to bottom to ensure each leg is exactly even at both top and bottom. Be sure to see the link in the description above or below this video to see the whole miter saw station build, including the next segment where I build the frame with these legs. So that's why I built my legs this way. Come on over to Heartwood Art and get all the dimensions and tips on this, and I'll see you in the shop.